Next, Mr. Chameleon and the High Cost of Living Murder Case. Tonight, we again present the famous Mr. Chameleon of Central Police Headquarters in his famous cases of crime and murder, brought to you by the makers of genuine Bayer Aspirin. Mr. Chameleon, as you know, is the famous and dreaded detective who frequently uses a disguise to track down a killer, a disguise which at all times is recognized by the audience. Tonight, we give you Mr. Chameleon in The High Cost of Living Murder Case. The scene opens in the modestly furnished sitting room of a middle-aged couple, John Sargent and his wife Mary. And they, like countless couples everywhere, are discussing a common subject of today, the high cost of living. A subject, however, which in their case is destined to invite the hand of murder. It seems to get harder and harder every day, John, the way prices are. I know, Mary. At my time of life, the best I can hope for is to hold my job. John, you you haven't lost it, have you? No, not yet. But with younger men pressing in on me, I'd... Oh, mercy. It's somebody at the door. I'll see who it is. Oh, if it's company, Mary. Let's say we're going out. I don't feel like talking tonight. Excuse me, but uh, I wonder if you could tell me if there's any place in the neighborhood... I could rent a room. Rent a room? I work for the Hammond Chemical Works a few blocks down. One of the girls there told me some of the families along here take in roommates. I've uh, just been moved here from our Cleveland branch. Oh, I see. But I really don't know of any place. But come inside anyway. Thank you, ma'am. I have an idea, but I want to speak to my husband about it. Oh, John, come here. Yes, Mary, what is it? This young man is looking for a place to live. Yes? He's connected with that big chemical works and just moved to town. Lyra Jackson is my name, sir. I'm the head of one of Mr. Hammond's departments. Pretty important job for a young fellow like you. Well, being moved to the main plant here was a big promotion for me. That's why I'd like to live near the plant. I intend to work long hours at my new job. Well... Not many young men talk that way these days. Well, I don't see any way to reach the top of the ladder without climbing it. John, I have an idea. I imagine I'm thinking about the same thing you are, Mary. I thought we might let Mr. Jackson have one of our rooms. Oh, say, that'd be wonderful. Well, that's not what I thought my wife had in mind, but... To be honest, just as you rang the bell, my husband and I were talking about the high cost of living. I could pay $25 a week, ma'am, for my room. And an extra ten if you'd let me use part of your basement to set up a laboratory for some experiments I'm making. Oh, why, John, that's $35 a week. It, it would end all our worries. Oh, Mary, I, I just don't like the idea of your taking in a rumor. And that's no reflection on you, young man. Mr. Jackson, if you'll excuse us a moment, I, I'd like to speak to my husband in another room. Why, certainly. Well, what do you think, John? Do whatever you want, my dear, but it'll be a lot of extra work for you, and we don't know who that young man is. We, you're afraid of something? Well, not exactly, oh, Mary. We need I... the money, John. I can get a woman to help me in the house once a week. I see you've made up your mind, Mary. I'll follow along. Oh, all right, John. We'll go in and tell him. I wonder what kind of laboratory he wants to set up in the basement. Well, Mr. Jackson, my wife and I have decided to take you into our home. Say, that's swell. Can I get my bag and stay here tonight? Well, I... Here's a letter from Mr. Hammond saying I'm all right. Well, it's sudden, but I'll get your room ready. I'll get my bag and be back in a little while. Did you pull it off, Larry? <laughs> it was a pushover, Hagen. A pushover. Did, uh... You fix up about the basement? You're asking me? <laughs> well, then we'll move the small stuff in there tomorrow, Larry, and the big stuff in a couple of days. Why wait till tomorrow, Hagen? I'm moving in tonight. I'll open the cellar door after they've gone to sleep. Okay. 
I'll report back to the chief. <laughs> Gotta give it to you, kid. Inside a jail or out, you're the most convincing guy in the racket. And exactly one week later, we see the astute and dreaded Mr. Chameleon of Central Police Headquarters with his partner, Detective Dave Arnold, standing over the body of Mary Sargent as he speaks to her dazed and sorrowing husband, John. All you can do, Mr. Sargent, is face it. My Mary, strangled to death with a clothesline. Heaven help me. Who could have done this? The clothesline interests me. I think it's the first clue to the murder. First clue? Well, what Mr. Chameleon means, Mr. Sergeant, is that your wife was strangled with a piece from a clothesline cut from one she kept in the basement. And she met her death upstairs in the sitting room. If I'd heard her get up in the night and go downstairs, I slept through it all. And you can think of no reason, Mr. Sergeant, why anyone should have killed your wife. None, Mr. Chameleon. We had no money, no valuables. All we had in the world was each other. I noticed that a large part of your basement was cut off and made into a chemical laboratory. Are you um, an experimental chemist by any chance? No. That laboratory was used by the young man Border. He found poor Mary when he started out for work this morning. You think he could have had anything to do with the crime, Mr. Sargent? Oh, heavens no, Mr. Chameleon. He has a big job at the Hammond Chemical Works. He's strictly first class. He and I built that laboratory together. What's his name? Uh, Larry Jackson. Larry Jackson. Dave, I think I'll run over to see Mr. Jackson. Uh, you wait here for the medical examiner and then follow me there, please. Okay, Mr. Chameleon. Mr. Jackson, I'm Chameleon of the police. It's a pleasure to meet you, Mr. Chameleon. I suppose you're here about that poor woman's murder. Mr. Sargent informed me that you discovered the body. Yes, as, as I was leaving for work this morning. Mr. Sargent also informed me that the laboratory in the basement was built by him and you for your particular use. That's not exactly true, Mr. Chameleon. What? The laboratory was already in the house when I took a room there. It was? That's one reason I went there to Rome. You see, John Sargent had come here and asked one of the girls if there was anybody working here at the chemical works who would like to rent a room and a house where there was a usable laboratory in the basement. I'm interested because Mary Sargent was strangled with a piece of clothesline cut from one in the basement near the laboratory. Oh, no. I wonder why the murdered woman's husband should have lied about that laboratory. I think I'd better get the girl that Mr. Sargent talked to about finding a rumor. I'll, uh, I'll ring for her. Did you ring for me, Mr. Jackson? Uh, yes. Ella, this is Mr. Chameleon. The famous detective? How, how do you do, Mr. Chameleon? How do you do? Ella, I wish you'd tell Mr. Chameleon exactly what happened when John Sargent came here looking for a boarder. Well... Mr. Sargent asked if I thought anyone here would like to rent a room in a house with a laboratory in it. So when Mr. Jackson was moved here from our Cleveland branch, I told him about it. I see. Um, how long ago was that? Well, it was just one week ago today, Mr. Chameleon. One week? Didn't waste much time, did they? That's all you need me for. I have some typing to do. Yes, that's all, Ella. Thank you. Mr. Chameleon, this whole thing is beginning to look very strange to me. I think I'd better tell you a few things I heard in that house. Looks more than strange, Larry. It looks ominous and dreadful. Uh, go on, please. The murdered woman, Mary Sargent, was in a pretty terrible smear with her husband. They were quarreling? It was about a woman the husband was mixed up with. Mary Sargent accused her husband, and he threatened her. What well, made my blood run cold. He threatened her? He put it down flat that he'd live his own life. And if she tried any monkey business, he'd... He'd strangle her to death. Well, well. I'd not swear to it, but I... I think I heard Sergeant follow his wife downstairs after an all-night battle early this morning, about five o'clock. If that's the fact, I've got my murderer. I can't swear to it, Mr. Chameleon, but I... I think that's when he killed her. 
the woman they were rowing about was named Gertie Ross. You've a good memory, Larry. I couldn't forget it very easily, Mr. Comedian. I heard them shrieking out that name a hundred times. Gertie Ross. Oh, I'll write that down. Mr. Comedian. Yes, Ella? There's a Detective Arnold waiting in the reception room for you. Oh, tell him I'll be with him in a second, please, Ella. All right, Mr. Comedian. I guess there's no point asking you uh, where this Gertie Ross lives, Larry. After I saw Mrs. Sergeant murdered, I tabbed Gertie's address from a book John Sergeant dropped out of his pocket. Here it, here it is, Mr. Comedian. Oh, thank you, Larry. Well, it's not often the police run across as intelligent a witness as you. See you later. Good day, Mr. Comedian. Dave. Yes, Mr. Comedian. Come along, Dave. We've got a hot lead. A hot lead? What did you find out? Enough evidence, perhaps, to hang the murdered woman's husband three times over. What, that harmless guy? I don't believe it. We're going to see a woman named Gertie Ross. Well, what's the setup, Mr. Comedian? Same sordid story of a triangle, Dave. Here's the Ross woman's address. The quicker we get there, the better. Gary Ross, you admit that you were involved with the murdered woman's husband, John Sargent. Sure. Why shouldn't I? I'm not denying anything, Mr. Comedian. How long has it been going on, Gary? Oh, a couple of years, more or less. Sergeant wanted to marry me. So the two of you killed his wife, huh? Not me. John Sargent must have. I told him to let well enough alone. Good advice, Gertie, if... Well, how should I know he was going to do the old girl in? You don't seem very fond of your middle-aged boyfriend. I'm not given to being fond of any man. I'm only fond of what I get out of him. Boy, what a wife you'd make for a guy that was getting tired of life. Gertie, where were you at the murder time? You mind telling me? I stayed all night with a sick friend. Here's her name and address. Thanks, Gertie. By the way, did you ever happen to see that new boarder they have at Sergeant's house? Larry Jackson? No, Mr. Chameleon. I never heard of any Larry Jackson. Come on, Dave, that's all. Bye, Gertie. I don't care what that dame says, Mr. Chameleon. I'm telling you poor Mr. Sergeant is no wife killer. You can look at him and see that. Well, Dave, that's what a lot of people said about the famous murderer Crippen until Scotland Yard picked him up. Well, I'm still not buying it, Mr. Chameleon. When we find out what that basement laboratory in Sergeant's house means, or conceals, Dave, we'll know. I've never said anything like this before, Mr. Chameleon, but I think you're letting that bird Larry Jackson kid you. Boy, he'll be lucky if he's not murdered himself. He sounds bad to me. All right, Dave. We'll go out to see his boss and get a line on, Larry. And then tonight, you and I will get into Sergeant's house and investigate that mysterious laboratory. Want to go out to Larry's boss, Mr. Hammonds, now, Mr. Chameleon? Mm Mm-hmm. Let's go, Dave. Mr. Hammond, I can see how busy you are, so I'll take only a moment of your time. As I am a bit snowed under, Mr. Chameleon, but uh, sit down. Thank you. Larry Jackson, one of your um, employees, has given me a lot of important evidence. Damning evidence, in fact, in a murder that I'm investigating. The uh, murder of the woman he roomed with, you mean? Yes, Mary Sargent. My partner, Detective Arnold, here says Larry sounds bad to him. Wait a minute, Mr. Chameleon. I only... So I came here, Mr. Hammond, to get any information that you're free to give about Larry. I see. Well, here's his record with the company. I've known him since he was a boy. No good, Mr. Hammond. Larry started with us as an errand boy in our Cleveland branch. Mm -hmm. He went to night school to study chemistry, was graduated with honors, worked his way up to assistant branch manager, and... uh, Did so well that I brought him on here last week as department head. You see, Dave? There's not a dishonest bone in his body, Detective Arnold. Nobody could ever convince me Larry Jackson would do anything wrong. Well, thanks tremendously, Mr. Hammond. That's all I wanted to know. That should convince Detective Arnold. Come along, Dave. Good day, Mr. Chameleon. Good day. Mr. Chameleon, what are you trying to do? Make a dope out of me? Far from it, Dave. You... Look! There's Larry Jackson now at his office door. Yeah. And the guy he's telling goodbye to is none other than Bash Hagen. What did I tell you? Don't let them see us, Dave. Wait till Larry closes his door 
and then pick up Hagen. You bundle him off to headquarters, and I'll follow you later. The trail is getting hot. Mr. Chameleon and the High Cost of Living murder case continues in just a moment. When you have a cold, you need Bayer Aspirin. Need it because it's important to you that you get quick relief from the headachy, feverish feeling and the muscular aches and pains that almost always accompany a cold. And because Bayer Aspirin gives you this important relief, it should be taken at the first sign of a cold before you do anything else. Regardless of what you do to stop or shorten a cold, we believe your own doctor will tell you that this is sound advice. And it's advice you can follow with confidence. For Bayer aspirin is used by millions to treat these distressing symptoms. It provides amazingly fast relief, makes you feel better because it's ready to go to work in two seconds. And its single active ingredient is so gentle to the system that doctors prescribe it even for small children. That's why it's been used by millions of normal people without ill effect. So at the first sign of a cold, before you do anything else, take Bayer Aspirin. When you buy, ask for Bayer Aspirin, not just for aspirin alone. Get the 100-tablet bottle and you get Bayer Aspirin tablets for less than a penny apiece. And now back to Mr. Chameleon and the High Cost of Living murder case. When John Sargent and his wife Mary rented a room in their home to Larry Jackson, a young employee at a nearby chemical plant, they little dreamed that a week later, Mary would be found strangled to death. Mr. Chameleon has just questioned Mr. Hammond, the head of the plant, who reveals that Larry is a young man of fine character and above suspicion. But now, at Mr. Chameleon's office at Central Headquarters, Detective Dave Arnold brings in a notorious gangster, Bash Hagen. Here's Bash Hagen, Mr. Chameleon. Hello, Hagen. Have a cigarette? Yeah? Oh, yeah, yeah, thanks, thanks. Well, what can I do for you, Mr. Chameleon? Tell me, what's your connection with Larry Jackson? Well, it's nothing up your alley, Mr. Chameleon. We're just friends. Hmm? Larry done me a favor once. I'm not one to forget. What was the favor, Hagen? Did you murder somebody for him? Listen, Mr. Chameleon... It's all right to kid, but murder's no joke to me. Uh Uh-uh. It's a business. What are you reaching for, chameleon? A woman was murdered early this morning. Sure, the Lady Larry room with Mrs. Sarge, and he told me himself. Strangled with a piece of clothesline cut from one in the basement close to the laboratory where Larry often worked. Yeah. What's that laboratory the cover for, Hagen? And what were you doing there near the murder time? I wasn't there. Who said I was? Not Larry. Suppose Larry did. You think I tell you, Hagen? I've never been near the place Larry bought it. And if you think that kid bumped anybody, Mr. Chameleon, you're off base. He's 100% on the level. That's all, Hagen, for now. Go out that door to the right. Bye, Chameleon. Just don't get ideas about Larry Jacks. Well, I kept quiet, Mr. Chameleon, to keep from talking out of turn. How, Dave? Why, it's plain as day. Hagen and Larry Jackson pulled that job together. That's beginning to look that way, Dave. But the question is, what secret does that laboratory conceal? What horrible secret? Well, we're going out there tonight and find out. Right. And I think we'll find something dreadful. Oh, Chameleon. Quick. What's happened, Commissioner? There's been another murder at the sergeant house. What? Who, Commissioner? Larry Jackson. Larry Jackson? Yes, Detective Arnold, Larry Jackson, your prime suspect. Get the car, Dave. The body was found outside the laboratory in the basement, Chameleon. And the precinct police are holding John Sargent, the murdered woman's husband. While we're on the way out, Commissioner, have the little iron door at the back of the laboratory smashed in. And if it won't give, use an explosive to break it through. Right away, Chameleon. I'll use your phone. Mr. Sergeant, you ask me why you're being held here. I have a right to know, Mr. Chameleon. You're being held because three people lived in this house and two have been murdered. And you alone are alive. But why should I have killed my wife? Why should I have killed that fine boy, Larry Jackson? I can't talk to you now, John Sergeant. I will after I've seen what that laboratory in your basement conceals. But it wasn't my laboratory, Mr. Chameleon. It was Larry Jackson. Mr. Chameleon, come quick. Right, Dave. The boy's finally smashed in that iron door to the laboratory. Iron door? Lead the way, Dave. You stay in this room, please, Mr. Sergeant. What'd you find, Dave? Two bodies soaking in acid tanks, Mr. Chameleon. I'm not surprised. Here's the place now. Have a look. 
if you can stand it. <sighs> Two pals of Bash Hagen's. It's pretty grisly. Find out if the commissioner has pulled in Hagen. I shouldn't have let him go. Oh, the commissioner phoned in while you were with John Sargent. They're holding Hagen for you. Dave, push that uh, packing case over there aside, please. Okay, but what's the idea? This is what we're after, Dave. Pull up that trap door. Hey, look. There's a stairway. A small cellar under the cellar. Let's go down, Dave. You stay halfway down, Dave. Keep your eyes on that trap door. If anybody tries to shut us in, don't ask questions. Shoot to kill. I got you. What is down there, Mr. Chameleon? Keep your eye on that door, Dave. I am, Mr. Chameleon, but what's down there? Loot to the tune of a king's ransom. The quarter million in furs from the vine and robbery. Bundles of bearer bonds from the Continental Bank robbery. Lord knows what else. Wow, what a haul. I'm coming up, Dave. Close the door, Dave. Put a couple of men to guard it. I'm going back to see John Sargent. Now, tell me about that laboratory in the room behind it, Mr. Sergeant, and the cellar under the cellar. I don't know what you're talking about, Mr. Chameleon. I'm sorry, but under the circumstances, all I can do is hold you on suspicion of murder. I'm innocent. I'm being framed. Framed, I tell you, Mr. Chameleon. Take it easy, Mr. Hammond. I demand to see Mr. Chameleon, Detective Arnold. It's all right, Dave. I'll see Mr. Hammond. We'll go into another room. Stay with John, Sergeant, Dave. Yes, sir. Well, Mr. Hammond. I came to ask how a police officer of your reputation, Mr. Chameleon, could have permitted a respectable boy like Larry Jackson to be killed when you knew very well this was a house of murder. It's inconceivable why you didn't warn him to stay away from here. I did warn him, Mr. Hammond. I went into his office after I left yours this morning and told him to keep clear of this place. And I did this in face of seeing him with a known and desperate criminal. What? The boy you put so much faith in, Mr. Hammond, was definitely part of a criminal operation. Oh, I, I can't believe it, Mr. Chameleon. It, it's ludicrous. Well, if you'll meet me in this house at nine tonight, I'll prove my point. Well, that's fair. I'll have two of my suspects here and try to break them down. One is John Sargent, the other a woman named Gertie Ross, whom Larry Jackson told us was having a love affair with John Sargent. Nine o'clock it is, Mr. Chameleon. And I hope you make good. I forgot to mention I'll appear here in disguise. As the brother of a man who is obligated and grateful to Larry Jackson for a favor done in the past. My disguised name will be Rocky Hagen. Don't be surprised. So, at nine that night, we see Mr. Chameleon in his disguise as Rocky Hagen, a typical underworld character, confronting Gertie Ross and John Sargent, with James Hammond, an interested spectator. And we hear Mr. Chameleon in his disguised voice saying, Yeah, Rocky Hagen's the name, Gertie. And I came with Detective Arnold because that dirty cop chameleon's got my brother Bash in jail for a crime he didn't have no part in. You and John Sargent is trying to plan on it. So what? I never heard of your brother. Easy, sister. Easy, easy. Larry Jackson told my brother that you and John Sargent was a twosome planning to do in Sargent's wife, Mary. Lady that was murdered. What's that? I never saw this woman before tonight. And I never saw Mr. Sargent before either. It's all a lie. Lying to an honest gent like me don't pay, see? My brother Bash Hagen also told me about that uh, cellar under the cellar where Larry Jackson hid the loot that you folks killed two of his pals to get at and soaked their bodies in acid. What? What? Quit whatin' me. And listen. I never heard of a cellar under a cellar or any bodies in acid. You're lying, Rocky Hagen. Uh, Rocky. Yeah, Mr. Hammond. If you'll come into the next room, I think I can tell you something about these two people and that cellar. Something Larry Jackson told me before he was killed. Okay, Mr. Hammond. I'm with you. Well, what do you want to tell me, Mr. Hammond? 
That I'm going to kill you, Chameleon? You... You're cleverer than I gave you credit for. Before I go to heaven, I'd like to, um, hear the story, Hammond. Gladly, Chameleon. Gladly. In a few minutes, you can repeat it to St. Peter. I ordered Larry to get a room in this house. Clever. The idea was to get an innocent-looking place to hide our loot. After he got in, Bash Hagen and some of the boys built the laboratory. And dug that undercellar for the loot at night. And Mary Sargent, the murdered woman, caught Larry there and he killed her, huh? Sure. Then I killed Larry myself. Dead men don't squeal. I cut his throat. The uh, mistake that you made, Hammond, was in dropping this engraved pencil beside his body. That's what put me on to you. So you lured me here on a trick, Chameleon. <laughs> 